first uh, thing is to have approval of the minutes. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? All right. Uh, next, we have uh, finance approving the disbursements from the past month. Could I have a motion for that? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments on the finances? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, next is leases. Steve, there are um, no there are no uh, leases this evening, but I will give an um, give you an update. Um, the um, assignment yep. uh, that we approved last month is awaiting um, the closing schedule. Basically, the the schedule to to close. We don't have a date defined at this point. I checked in just as recently as yesterday, and um, they're still awaiting that. Okay. They believe financing and all of that is, you know, intact, but they're just waiting a final date for closing. Okay. So when that, um, yes, mm -hmm. and so when that does occur, we will alter. I think it's only fair to do so. I'll alter the date. Okay. You know, I mean, we kind of jumped ahead because that was what was asked. Um, you know, uh, for our last meeting. Uh, um, so we'll alter that date, okay. ad adjust it accordingly yep. to start that two month. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, anything on projects? I don't know, Is do you want to? Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I noticed, I don't know, remember the name of what walking it was that we're getting all types of motor vehicles stored there. Um, yeah, so he winterizes. I don't think we really have, I mean, this was last year too. There's, there's not really a restriction. No, I, I'm not objecting. I'm mm -hmm. just, I, I faintly remember that we had a restriction on it even before. Am I wrong? Yeah, I don't, we don't really have anything on that. It's, it's the vast majority is, is boats. wrapped boats and everything. That's, but he, he will, um, utilize every, nearly every inch of space in there as he pulls those out, like last year. Yep. He's doing a good job. Yep. Yep. Um, on the on projects, is this the time you want to, Steve, run through the uh, kind of the bullet points on yeah. Destination I, I, Iowa yeah. Grant? I placed at your, I, yeah, I think you, Randall, okay, good. I want to make sure each of you have at your um, spot there. This is uh, the green sheet that is placed on this um, council agenda, this cycle for council agenda. This is the uh, resolution that authorizes the um, submission of a creative placemaking grant application to the Destination Iowa program through the Iowa Economic Development Authority. And so um, this is a uh, new um, sort of one-time only grant um, State of Iowa grant opportunity um, that the staff has uh, plans to submit by the deadline, which is this this Friday, and I want to I'm going to basically go through these bullet items so that it familiarizes um, this commission um, with what the um, staff is submitting at council's um, uh, request. Basically, um, they this this basically. Um, um, is is we'll probably know within I would guess inside of a couple months. Uh, you know we'll hear back about um, how this is. Um, you know the success of of the or the reaction from the state about this. And so um, while I have been part of the um, the general team of this. Um, the, the main point of contact from the city side of things has been um, essentially Clay Merritt. Uh, and so um, the, uh, a lot of those particular uh, details and the actual authorization or authoring of the uh, uh, grant writing and sort of finalizing of those things, um, those details has, has been by Clay. So. Uh, I think to, not, to avoid leaving anything out, and I know a lot of you have read ahead, 
Uh, I, but for the benefit of those that might be tuning in, I just want to kind of read through this. Um, the Iowa Economic Development Authority recently released a grant opportunity centered on the creative, attractive, and memorable places for people to live and work through transformational projects that leverage local community assets to improve the experience for visitors and residents. The City of Davenport is submitting a grant application in cooperation with court and coordination with the Figgy Art Museum for a series of signature projects totaling $24 million. The city is requesting $9.6 million from the Iowa Economic Development Authority. 40% of the eligible costs includes preliminary construction uh, engineering services, construction and con uh, contingency. 60% of the required eligible cost will be provided by the city and Figgy Art Museum. The total city share would be $12 million, of which $60 million uh, is from ARPA local funds and six million from the Canadian Pacific Community Investment Agreement. And Figgy share is estimated to be 2.4 million. And then the city's project will include the following components. One, the high intensity multi-generational experience zone that will include custom elements that are colorful and urban. The area will include, but is not limited to a signature tower structure, slides, climbing assets, an interactive water feature, and space for winter activities. The design focuses on year-round activity throughout. Two, creation of a more passive zone close to Lock and Dam 15 that highlights the existing amphitheater, its relation to the Mississippi River, and scenic e eagle and nature views. Three, entry plaza that welcomes visitors, residents and visitors into the new space. Four, overall site improvements such as, but not limited to, the inclusion of colorful LED lighting, shade structures, seating, and unique swing elements. Five, restoration of the landing area and enhanced connection points to LeClaire Park. Six, a new restroom facility that will service the space. Seven, improvements to the river walk within the main street landing site. Eight, construction of a pedestrian bridge that allows continuous and safe access over the Canadian Pacific Rail Line. Nine, installation of a railroad quiet zone that will stretch from Marquette Street to Mound Street. This component will reduce no noise pollution and increase safety within the project area and throughout the riverfront, completed in accordance with federal railroad administration guidelines. Ten, upgrade and renovate the sky bridge facilities, LED lighting, hardware and software components, and 11 artistic LED programming lighting of the Figgy Art Museum will consist of approximately 3,106 linear feet of colorful features. This will be integrated into four sides of the building in order to fully activate the volume of the space and maximize its impact. And so this, um, that the state basically is challenging, um, you know, cities across the, um, the uh, across the state to, um, you know, attempt to, um, you know, from a destination standpoint to the, the, this funding source, um, think think a little bigger than uh, and outside, you know, the, the traditional trails and you know parks and that sort of thing. Think a little bigger of of a draw and and of a regional nature, and um, and this is, um, uh, I think, an exciting uh, uh, grouping of, 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 of a package for um, Davenport and, and the riverfront. Um, so um, I wanted to, especially given the timing of our meeting with, um, you know, with the submission of this particular grant, like I said, it's before council this cycle, they actually approve the um, submission of the grant. The, um, there's lots of details that end up um, happening once the grant would be, um, you know, secured. But those details would be, you know, forthcoming once that would happen. But as is, what obviously happens is before um, uh, any submission of the grant, staff is always um, seeking the approval of uh, by council to move forward. So and so, that's what's Steve, um, this was actually done somewhat in conjunction with, I think, like LeClaire and, and Bettendorf, not necessarily completely coordinating, but there is complementary sort of yeah. concepts across the 
our, our regional river area, yeah. is that right? Yeah, not to confuse, but there are, there are multiple buckets of money that the state has um, through like different size cities and different um, um, kinds of, um, um, for different kinds of uses mm -hmm. essentially. And so um, there have been, you know, a multitude of discussions with um, various neighboring jurisdictions and then, so council, this comes before council to approve tomorrow. And yeah, this is, we're is in it, that cycle. Does it have to be submitted uh, by the 30th of this month? Is yes. that the deadline? Okay, yeah. okay. So obviously there's um, a lot, right? And yeah. the area that we we are charged with sort of overseeing, so there will be a lot of Yeah, council has been, yeah, forward. so they have been working um, with staff on, you know, throughout this, this process and actually have been, um, looking at, you know, various, um, uh, you know, design, you know, m modeling and s some of those kinds of things um, throughout this as well to the point that they can initially, right? I mean, nothing is um, final, final right. uh, at, this, at this stage, but obviously um, the, some of those details get ironed out throughout. So, Dee, I know you're integral with, with the Figgy. Do you have any... Uh, Anything you'd like to add in terms of, you know, the the, the additional part that the piggy plays in there? Um, well, actually, I'm not on the board anymore. Uh, the lighting of the outside has been on the list for since we opened, nearly, and we've looked at a lot of different applications. I've worked on committees. Um, obviously, it's it's very expensive. Um, uh, and um, though I don't think uh, in terms of their announcement, they've not announced this fundraising for this. This is not something they have money in hand for. Okay. All right, anybody have any other questions? I don't know if there's any other specifics that Steve could speak to, but if, if there are questions, go yeah. ahead. Um, on the, as Chris was showing us here a little bit ago, the pedestrian bridge and I know they, the city, Clay Merritt, uh, Chad Dyson, and some other city officials had several occasions where the public could give input mm -hmm. on what some of these things that are listed on this very list that you just read, Steve, uh, what to be included in the, uh, in the upgrades to our riverfront and the Main Street landing in particular. Um, but I'm, I just wonder, I assume that the finalization of, of these particular items that are listed here is going to happen after they get the grant, or is that uh, because I'm 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 concerned about the pedestrian bridge location. If in fact it's, which Chris had some kind of electronic version of Clay Merritt speaking at some kind of meeting. I did, I haven't seen that, but it seems to me. I mean, they need some input on location. If that's if they're thinking of putting it by the sky bridge, that makes no sense to me. I mean, we need a pedestrian access, no question, but to put it, we already have pedestrian access with the sky bridge. Why would you put another one within a block, yeah, for well, example? I, well, I would address it in this way. Um, I, there's no concrete, um, um, you know, there's only some level of detail that's uh, able to be provided at, at a stage before you receive a grant anyway, because you might get none. You might get a portion of the grant. You're gonna have to, uh, you might get all of it, and okay. you're, you're going to have to scale back uh, to adjust accordingly um, so, the, the monies. And so um, any one of these pieces or all of them are going to have to adjust, and that's, that's the point that council has asked. I sat through the last council meeting about this, um, and they asked similar questions. It's a good question, and that's what it's going to come down to when they have to decide ultimately the very question you're asking too about placement and even certain projects if it comes to that. And I would think, Steve, there will be time for mm -hmm. additional public input on some of those kinds of things because, Bill, I think there will be a lot of people interested and, in that question. Okay, and do you, do you hopefully foresee that once we have the grant, whatever monies we get, we, we as a Riverfront Improvement Commission will see these things before they go to council? These the the items that they think that they really want to have based on the money that they get, if if they get any, you think we as a Riverfront Improvement Commission will be in the pecking order to see these things? All I all I can do is ask. I would hope so, wouldn't you? 
Yeah, I, I think it would certainly be ideal if that was the case. I, I mean, think isn't it is that what, what we've talked about this likely. before? You know, uh, where, why we're here, but maybe we're not. Yeah, I mean, why? What's our, what's the point if everything goes right past us? I mean, this is exactly what we're talking about. We are the Riverfront Improvement Commission, and these are happening on the riverfront. So it seems to me that we should definitely have some input on what's happening here. I don't know, maybe I'm off. No, I don't, I actually, when a little bit later in our meeting, I think that is a very appropriate uh, part of the discussion that we're gonna have. Um, so if there are any other questions for Steve on this, I think we'll go ahead and just jump into your staff report, Steve. Okay, uh, I just wanted to make mention of a couple um, items. Um, I s wanted to thank you all for um, reviewing and um, for providing some input relative to the core um, letter, I'll call it. Um, I received um, really good feedback and also uh, from Jim Holman. This is regarding the Credit Island, we'll call it the SLU uh, in, in general. Um, and so um, basically the next step after we, I, the mayor signed this inquiry letter, which begins the process, and um, basically he prepares um, uh, a package at this point that is sent to their division office, and then um, it begins to in, endure, go through a ranking among other projects uh, within the district um, sometime prior to the end of the end of the year, and if it's selected as a priority among the the division, um, and it hopefully would be, um, we're encouraged to think it might be, um, then um, we could see funding as soon as um, summer, prior to summer, uh, and the first hundred thousand uh, is um, um, covered by the federal government, basically. Uh, and then um, during that initial funding, uh, it says here we would uh, complete a federal interest determination. And in that document, we would establish uh, the cost estimates for feasibility and would start to lay out the schedule for that feasibility. So we would begin to layer up um, the, the cost for the ultimate project, the overall project, and, and begin to look at who's responsible for what, what the project itself, the scope of, um, looks like, and then um, the responsibilities. And so um, there's some level of, of encouragement um, for this particular uh, project from, from an environmental standpoint uh, and the benefits therein for the entirety. And so I just want to point out that, um, you know, kudos to the, the commission on this because, um, you know, having we, we led the effort a couple of years ago, it might seem like eons ago, but the whole River West idea uh, is this, is this. This is what we did um, as part of our kind of our strategic planning and an offshoot, direct offshoot of strategic planning, River West drove um, uh, uh, the slough and while it seemed large, right, in scale, like this, I, this fancy idea of, of, uh, of, of the slough or the bridge or whatever, that this, and I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but that there's, there's some promise. And even back then it seemed um, lofty, but um, we, we know that there's something here because as many of you have pointed out, the Bl Black Hawk Creek flowing into the slough and, and we've got sedimentation and we've got lots of issues here. No one's talking about that this is gonna um, uh, fix all the issues that we know are, are central to Credit Island, but this, this might address some of the big ones. Uh, and, um, and I think that's important. I think it's important to remind ourselves that if we kind of stick to a few things, uh, it takes time, but timing is everything too. And in this case, the core uh, was there with us at, at some of those sessions and it took a couple of go arounds, but maybe, just maybe this is, this is worth, has been worth the wait. So it sounds encouraging and um, we'll see. So I'll keep kind of letting you all know as I learn more, but um, you know, we'll see. Uh, you know, we're still in the midst of, uh, of our season of, uh, from a programming um, standpoint, already looking at next year a, a bit as well, but like just this past sun, uh, Sunday, uh, we had the, the final um, QC Empowerment Open Air 
um, market in Quinlan Court, which was uh, a nice a nice event as well. Um, upcoming, uh, we have uh, our final concert, final of 18 um, concerts in Quinlan Court. Uh, this Thursday night, we have um, the second uh, to the last of two movie nights this Friday, and then the following Friday, we have a second movie night. Um, so we're showing Cars this Friday night, and we're showing Hocus Pocus, the original, on the 7th of October. Uh, that was not by accident, that was by design. Uh, so I think we're gonna see some nice crowds on some nice chilly evenings uh, coming up. And uh, a nice car show. Um, I place these flyers for reminders at your, at your seat. A uh, nice car show this Saturday afternoon, kind of uh, uh, along Beiderbeck and LeClaire Park, kind of in conjunction with, you know, Great House Farmers Market will be going on during most of that time as well. We did this last year. Um, proceeds benefit the Veterans Outreach Center. This is a, a really nice thing. Um, so, uh, and and so there, and, and yet, and we still have a couple other things going on. Um, the uh, working with Public Works on the 15th. Uh, we want to do a, a kind of a year-end cleanup, riverfront cleanup, and a sort event, uh, kind of counting. Uh, some of the, the trash, sorting it, and, and, and so we're going to do that down at the riverfront in conjunction with uh, uh, Farmer's Market going on on October, Saturday, October 15th, and so that kind of, that kind of really is a nice fall, fall event as well. I would uh, mention the, um, we have a, the Empower House, which is a not-for-profit, is having, uh, again this year, a 5K event, uh, pre- and post-event at Quinlan Court on the 8th. Uh, which really works uh, at Quinlan Court. When you use the Rec Trail as your 5K course, uh, it really works as a nice 5K pre and post event. So they've figured it out and they're gonna have tons of vendors and, and the, you know, music. And so the Saturday, the, I think from like nine to two or something, uh, the eighth uh, Quinlan Court will be um, well-programmed. Um, yesterday, uh, you may have caught some of this in the media. We had the first time ever at River Heritage Park, another first, right? We had two uh, vessels, um, this time from the same company, American Cruise Lines, who is uh, no stranger to Davenport. We've had American Cruise Line vessels docking in Davenport for 15, 16 years. Um, we had uh, two of them here. The first time one of them, the American Symphony, has docked here. It was her maiden voyage. Uh, and Bill Churchill uh, was, was uh, there and got a nice tour. And um, we, we enjoyed um, getting, getting to, on board to see um, uh, that, that, that boat. Uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful ship. And so uh, very nice. And on October 11th, we had, to, we had to do it again, this time with um, two, uh, two different companies, uh, but two ships again. Uh, so Viking and, again, the American Symphony will be here. Um, and then uh, there's another time later in October where we'll have two ships again, but it's back to American uh, Cruise Line. So it's really cool, though, to see not just one ship, but two vessels there along, American, uh, along River Heritage Park. Um, and you, uh, I think it was Bill actually mentioned, you know, wow, you actually could probably put a third one <laughs> if you wanted to. I mean, there's a, it's a long, it's a long area, right? I mean, there's, there's plenty of, uh, plenty of space. So, uh, it's, uh, really a cool, um, place. We got to visit with the captain and, um, I think what I was struck with is the captain actually remarked that this, uh, all along the Mississippi. I mean, I, I, he, he could say this to everybody. I don't think he does, but he, he said this is, this is his favorite place to actually, Denport's his favorite place to dock because it's, 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 it's not only easy, but it's actually, uh, you know, it's beautiful and, you know, that sort of thing. The docking area at River Heritage Park was um, very, um, um, uh, you know, we make it very accommodating and, and, and nice and all of that. So he was very um, complimentary. Oh, let's see here. Oh, um, so a while back we had planned a day with St. Ambrose University on their welcome back day. They used to call it Urban Plunge, but I forget, help me out, Randall. It's becoming Ambrosian, but it <laughs> rained out, unfortunately. 
Uh, and so that day we had it set up to have, like, oh my gosh, I had like 80 people signed up and it, it was a rain out and then it turned nice, but it was too late, it had been called. So what we did instead was um, leave it, I, I, gave, I gave them several dates, you know, where teams, you know, baseball team, athletic teams, service groups, whatever on campus um, could contact me if they wanted to do some railing painting is what I continue to push, you know. Uh, there's plenty to do. And uh, last Thursday, uh, the, the softball team um, had called, we coordinated, and we, they, I was so impressed, man. They, from down by the Channel Cat and Laura Lindsay, they did that whole stretch. It, you know, it needs it, and it's a high volume area. There's a lot of people that board that Channel Cat, and even though it's towards the end of the season, but uh, they went that whole stretch almost to the point where there no longer is a railing and it just goes into sort of um, a, a fencing basically. But they, in an hour and a half till it got dark, basically almost two hours time, 17 student athletes, they, they made it happen. Nice. I had to go get more paint because I, I mean, they, they, they were so impressive in what they were doing. Leave, leave it to student athletes, I think, is the lesson there. <laughs> but they, they, it was so impressive, I was very happy. Um, and they, they did a great, they wanted a team building thing. They didn't want this, you know, to split up in groups. They wanted to do it all together and they did it. And, and I'm, I'm very thankful. So uh, hats off to them and uh, we accomplished a lot. Um, and then finally, um, we've heard word that the um, Canadian Pacific uh, holiday train uh, after I think three years of being online is actually going to be in person or be real this year. Uh, and so uh, I guess uh, the details are forthcoming, but on Saturday, December 3rd, we'll be coming through um, through Davenport. We do not know a time yet, but I assure you that we will plan something around the freight house uh, for, for that. So. Great. Steve, what, um I remember talking about the, I thought we had funding for the dock at Lindsay, Lindsay Park at the Channel Cat down there. That's, that, that hasn't been installed, has it? The new? Oh, I know. Um, no, it hasn't. And it really is a couple, probably, I'm sure it's a year away. I mean, I'm sure it's next year of construction. So it's probably, we're probably looking at calendar year 2024. Oh. Metro Link is um, lead on that. We work, you know, we, we're partnering with them. Um, it's a $1.2 million FTA grant so that, that we has were not, awarded. So it has not. not totally fine. And, and yeah. part of that, it really is, um, it is the pandemic that interfered with that. There were a lot of um, uh, delays that were caused by that. That's a couple years delayed. Okay. That, that, yes. So, but it's still happening. I mean, it's still been awarded and it's still happening. There's an environmental, it's just been delayed. But we think that's 2024, is that? Yeah, I mean, given where we are now, it's construction season would be, you know, next year. And so I can't imagine it wouldn't, it would happen inside of next season for the Channel Cat season. So I would guess it's a 2024 okay. calendar year, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else, Steve? No, thank you. All right, uh, Chris, Parks Liaison Report.
Okay, Bill, you had a question? Um, no, no, was that the end? Chris, uh, I, was just... I think Bill Ashton maybe had a question for Chris, sorry. What's going on in Vandenberg? local crab to, to do all the work. They made everything. So it should, in my mind, there shouldn't be a need to go out to some private company, go to some of the local like electrical, mechanical, and plumbers to fix it. Sorry, Bill Churchill, did you also? Um, Steve, should I give you just a real quick update on veteran? Yeah. Um, I was down there two days ago, and I, the, uh, they, they had these stones that they were going to do for the overlook, and they weren't the right ones, but the ones that they wanted, they couldn't get. So in order to move the project forward, they have these stones that they're using right now, and they have built four stones tall and that part should be done uh they only had about six more to go when i was down there two days ago so i'm guessing that they have the stone part of four tiers built up right next to the bike trail it, it, it's kind of a zigzag thing the this is the overlook project part of it so now they're going to do the patio part whether it be the flat part at the top um, that should be getting started very soon as well so the overlook part is is uh, well underway. Uh, the rest of the the uh, upgrade to this particular phase is was a trails and an amphitheater, and the amphitheater almost got axed because there was an overage on budget because they had a bunch of garbage uh, when they scraped it. They had a bunch of garbage and they had to have that hauled off, and that cost more money. So they were concerned that they might not be able to get the amphitheater in this particular update. But uh, Clay Merritt has told us that that is in fact gonna happen. They've talked with the, group, the company that scraped this all off and they agreed to go ahead and have this happen. But then in talking with Zach Peterson, actually on site last week, he's concerned that they maybe not really understand the amount of dirt that still has to be brought in in order to get the true amphitheater effect of having a high toward the back end of the park and, and the look out over towards the river, which would be quite frankly, very, very nice, a very, a, a great view. And so in fact, Zach and I walked up there. And so um, we're hopeful, we're still hopeful that Langman, I think it's Langman is the, the company that has agreed to do the, include the amphitheater in this phase. We're hoping that they are still really gonna do that because I think that's gonna be a major plus for the park and the trail part of this upgrade. Uh, we do have 13 signs that are almost done. Uh, a local sign company has, in fact, we've been okaying and monitoring each sign as it has been made, approving it, the pictures and the, the wording. We have five signs that are gonna, as you walk along the trail, you're gonna have a sign that's on a pedestal. It's 20, 20 inches by 32 inches and then there'll be five military signs uh, each sign for the five branches of the military. And we have more signs that'll talk about different wars as you walk along the trail. So it's all educational. We have two major signs that are four feet by eight feet that are being made right now. Those signs that I just mentioned are pretty well done. The last two that they're working on right now is a four foot by eight foot World War II sign because we didn't think we could get all of World War II on a 20 inch by 32 inch sign. It's so complicated. So they're working on that right now and they're gonna include the, uh, 
And then the, and then the last sign is also four foot by eight foot uh, is the Rock Island Arsenal because we want the arsenal to be a major part of the information that we're gonna display at this Veterans Park since it's a major, major uh, military mm -hmm. installation right in our backyard. And the arsenal has agreed to help us uh, with all that information. So they've been very forthcoming in trying to help get all the information because you think about it, there's a lot on the arsenal island. There's a national cemetery. Uh, there's just a lot of things over there that, that need to be shared for our, in our area. So the sign company is, is coming real well. We have the uh, eight foot tall by 40 foot mural that has been painted by a local artist. That's done. Our big concern and what we're working on right now is the framing of that big eight foot by 40 foot mural and how it's gonna be mounted because obviously that's gonna catch a lot of wind and has to be very substantial in order to withstand storms. And so that's what we're working on right now. But the, the mural itself is already done. So the timing on all this will depend on how long it's gonna take them to finish the trail part of the, of the park. Um, the bike path is on, I call it a bypass. The bike path right now is a bypass. They're working on the river overlook, which goes, the bike path normally would go right by there, right down by the river. And so they have rerouted the bike path around to the north side of our park, actually, and it goes around and rehooks back up to the bike trail on the west side of where they're working on the overlook. So it's kind of a bypass on the bike path right now. That's not really where it's gonna go. Originally, when they get everything done, the bike path's gonna go back down right next to the river again. But they're working down there now, so they didn't want them in the way. So is that area that where the bypass is, because I've, I've taken my bike a few times through it, that's going to be refilled and then fill on top of it? Because that's exposed landfill. They cut to get the cut, the grade down to the bike path. You can read the 1965 Hormel packages, plastic <laughs> packages. Yeah, that's going to be, yeah, that's, that's. I mean, what is the proper way to, I mean, it used to be you have to cap a landfill, and that's probably what the side of that hill is. Are they going to recap it? Yeah, they're going to put refill that with, with dirt to make it uh, build up, just like the River Overlook is built up. So they just cut it down through there to get that bike bypass to go rejoin to the bike trail where it is right now. So eventually that'll be filled back in and the bike trail will go right down in front of the river and right next to the river overlook. So, uh, so I, I would say in general, it's progressing. It's not progressing very fast as most projects don't, but um, we are, and we originally thought that we wanted to have a ribbon cutting ceremony. If we got everything, we got the signs and 13 signs along the trails, the big eight foot by 40 foot mural installed and the river overlook all done. We were hoping to have maybe a ribbon cutting on November 11th, which would have been a perfect time. But we're thinking now as things are progressing, that may not happen, but we're more concerned about getting it done right and long-term so that it looks very, very nice. That's more of our concern than trying to hit the November 11th deadline. So that's how we're thinking, right? So it might be next spring before we have a ribbon cutting ceremony, but we're trying to get it right. Lots of effort involved in that. Thanks for the update, Bill. Um, there's nothing on the agenda for this, but um, just sort of, I, th I think the, uh, the Destination Iowa grant and just a lot of other recent conversations that have gone on, um, seems like this might be a good time for us to think about maybe it's uh, maybe next meeting doing, or the meeting after that doing maybe a, a strategic planning meeting where we stop and ask ourselves, uh, what we want to be and how we want to fit in with the city and what the, um, you know, what the probability is that we could accomplish the things as a commission that we think we ought to be doing and that we can be doing. Um, I think there's, uh, and, and I'm just gonna talk for a couple minutes. I, I, I've been thinking a lot about this in some of the meetings I've been at. Um, and it, it sort of seems like the challenge for the commission is we're in a bit of a quandary because we have a big mission um, and there was a time in, in the commission's history when it had a big revenue stream and so it could fulfill its mission. Um, it's difficult to fulfill a mission of doing a lot of big things that include maintenance and capital improvements and things like that if you don't have an active strong revenue stream. Um, you know, some of that is the, the city has made decisions over periods of time that, that have sort of taken away some of those streams. Um, 
and I, I think that we need to determine uh, as, a, as a commission whether given the realities of our current uh, funding status, if our, if our true mission at this point is to be an arm of, of planning and uh, a watchdog to protect the riverfront, uh, which is sort of what I think we have the revenue to do right now. I mean, frankly, if, if we don't have an alternative to the current revenue situation, I think uh, it would be, our time would be better spent saying to the extent that there are revenues that come in, we'll, we'll let the city have those to take care of the maintenance and the upkeep and, and, and not spend our time churning the $50,000 that goes to parks or whatever it might be. That, that's not a good use of our, our time, I don't think, as a commission. Um, on the other hand, there is a question of whether we should say, let's, let's figure out how we pursue uh, a revenue stream. Is that a, you know, some percentage of hotel motel? Is that some commitment that whatever development occurs on the riverfront, that the revenue stream from the commercial enterprise is dedicated to the commission? I think that that is a question. If, if something like that were to happen, then perhaps our role would be, yes, the planning and, and the watchdog, but also perhaps, um, you know, the upgrades and, and some of the more forward-thinking investment. Uh, but I, I think the reality is we kind of have to go one way or the other. We've been sort of living in this uh, no man's land, I would say, where, where we think that our, our mission is to do all of it, but there are certainly not the resources to do all of it. And so we spend a lot of time talking about $12,000 for a lease and $50,000 for transfer to parks, and that's just not really what we're here for as, like, as, a, as an overall mission. Um, so I, I throw that out to the, to the rest of the team, um, I, and maybe this is really a, a planning session where we have a chance to sort of you know, brainstorm some of this and, and think about how we might want to move something forward. So I open it up to, uh, to conversation. Okay. I, yeah. Yep. Go ahead, please. I, I agree with you in a, in a lot of respects. I think um, the difficulty uh, with a body like ours is that when um, the city council and the city staff believes there is no reason to consult or use our brains or our ability to plan, um, it leaves us without any ability to do anything. And so, you know, I've been on the other side. I know what it is uh, to be on the staff side. I know how actually easy it is to ignore a commission that doesn't have anything to do with you. Um, and you have no, there's nothing that's gonna happen to you. So I think really right now, the council um, is working with staff. Th these are projects that they believe are really high and important. And we are just kind of a weight around um, their necks. Now, on the other hand, um, there are a lot of things that we're interested in that they're, they're really not, they, they don't have a cohesive interest in. And I think that's kind of even apparent with watching the one-way discussions. Um, the council doesn't have a cohesive thought. Uh, I was in the meeting where Alderman Group said, we would love to have you be the fundraisers. Well, if you want us to be a fundraising group, which I'm not opposed to doing because I've done it, then that's who you should appoint. People who can fundraise, that that is what they do. That's what they know, that's how they know it. Um, so that's a different kind of arm. If, you, if, they, if the council wants us to lead a fundraising group, that would be something different. But for us to find revenues is impossible. You know, we bickered over 50,000 that goes to parks. It's not 50,000 that goes to parks. It's like if you think the um, commission has um, merit and value, and if you think our staff has value, then fund us. <laughs> I don't fund us. 
you know, don't, don't, don't say, oh, well, we got to pick up the garbage. Well, you, yes, obviously, you've created a lot of the park to pick up the garbage and do those things. Just give us the funding and watch us go. So that's the conversation I think we have to have. It's as, where is the reality check here? Um, otherwise, why come every month? You're right. Why be here? Um, uh, you know, in the past, there was like, well, if you want to lease here, you got to get the commission to approve it. Well, we're not really leasing anything in the downtown. And if they want to put a pedestrian bridge next to the sky bridge, um, really, we really have not much say other than to get a little ugly about it or something. And that's not very appropriate either. I mean, we want to stay on the same page. So I'd love to sit down and talk about it, but I really think we need a serious a serious approach with the city council. And if we sat down with them, I would say two thirds of them really don't have like a full thought process of what we mean. They're just appointing someone and like moving on. Yeah, no. So I guess my question is: So, are you, do you think there's value in, in as a as a group trying to put together a plan to say this? These would be our proposals, or are or are you proposing that really there's not even value in doing that? I think there's value in discussing where we would like to be, but I think that we also have to realize at some point it may be this group that says, "Hey, just you know, dump this ordinance. What are you doing?" You're, you're, you have asked us to spend time out of our day, make it worthwhile. If you don't think that we are adding any value, then, then let's not have a public meeting about it. And it, it's a sad thing and, a, and, and that, you know, this is a commission that has as much history as the city. But, you know, it, again, it, right now it's not really well understood by those who make decisions on the staff side. Therefore, it's not understood by council. Anyone else, any thoughts? Well, I, I, I think that's very valid. The point is, uh, and we can tread water here every month like we do, but if we have no weight or nobody really cares what we have to say or what our ideas are, what's the point? So, and because we don't have the revenue sources that this commission once had, because we've tried to clean the riverfront off so we could develop it, uh, which is, that's a double-edged sword. Yes, we now have the room to develop things, but we don't have the income we once had, so we don't carry the weight that we once had because money talks, as we all know. So I think we need to ask the council you know, where do you see the Riverfront Improvement Committee? What is our function? What is our purpose? And, and, and as much as we might not like to think about it, um, if they're not going to fund us, if they're not going to uh, take what we think or what we do uh, seriously, there's no point. So perhaps it is a, a small task force uh, that, that and we, we've had some meetings with uh, City Council uh, members, but I think it is perhaps prior to meeting with city council, you know, meeting just among ourselves to sort of, you know, put our thoughts down, I think with a little more specificity. Uh, so what I would welcome is certainly input from, from all members, you know, what are, what are things that you would like to, to see in that conversation? And then, um, Steve, maybe we can, you know, work on, finding a time where we have a conversation uh, with, with maybe initially the group of city council people who have been part of, of that joint group. Um, although I don't think that uh, that's probably, a, you know, that's maybe a preliminary step. I don't think it gets us very far, um, but it, it is perhaps a necessary step, you know, as we go through, you know, the sort of proper approach to things um, and just to, you know, start moving in a direction of resolution. I mean, you got to think about it. It was um, 2019, the winter of 2019, when we put together our Venn diagrams. They've never been presented to council. They've, the council has never 
seen what we thought our role would be. As a, We've as never a joint, met yeah. with council since 2019. As a joint group, actually. That's I, what I'm trying to nice, say. It was a nice... You know, I mean, maybe yeah. we should just kind of bring that back and look at it here and say, is this the discussion we have? I mean, the discussion then was we wanted to, you know, kind of carve out with some of the council members our place. Well, we don't, I mean, probably four or five of those, those council members back in 2019 aren't even with us today, let alone knowing what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And... That never really got presented to the highest level of city staff. So I mean, I, I mean, we could maybe we should start there with that, and see yeah, as a as a as a as a commission if we feel comfortable that that document could be touched up and then have the conversation with it. Yeah. Yeah, we we had a pretty in depth discussion mm -hmm. and and wrote things down. We we've, we've been down this road, mm -hmm. you know, at least from our point of view. Now we haven't we haven't taken the second step because I guess COVID hit and we got off track. But I think that's valid. We we have that written down already. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have commissioners that were, don't even know we did it, right? I mean, yeah, know, yeah, we that. we've been down that road. We got to clean it. You know, we got to kind of circle back. Yeah, I think that's a good starting point. I think that's a good starting point. Yeah, just circle back and see what we've already written and and see if we think that's still our focus and our guide and where we still want to go and where we want to from our perspective and then tweak that if, we're, if we need to, and then take that to the council or whomever we need to talk to. Steve, do you still have the, the versions of, I mean, we had done, we had done quite a few iterations, um, and, and I think, do you have it? Okay. So, yeah. Maybe that would be a nice thing for us to work on. Uh, let's plan on that for the next meeting where we get into the meat of that a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I think it would be really helpful, yeah. Maybe not be. I always feel like I'm not looking over here enough. So yes. <laughs> okay. Um, that was all I had. I appreciate your input. Um, next, uh, I don't think we have any public with business, but we'll throw that out there. Okay. Uh, any other business for the good of the order? Okay. All right. We're adjourned. Thank you. Start doing something.